Hey guys, what's going on? Hayden here, and it is the end of December, so you know, you guys know what that means. If you've been around on my channel long enough, you know that it is game of the year time. Um, so I wanted to have a few more people on this discussion than last year, but you know, work schedules just didn't happen. Um, so I still have uh, my crew that I had last year, so first off, I have Super Smash 77. Yo. And I have Silver Tom 93. Hello, how's it going? It is going really well. Um, so yeah, it, we're going to do things a little differently than we did last year. Um, last year we did a top five because there was just so many freaking games to play. Um, <laughs> this year I was going to do a top five, but then I was planning on having a bunch of people in the discussion. So I lowered it to a top three, but now it's only us three. But we you know, discussed it a little bit and just figured top three um, would be a little better. Maybe we can go more in depth with the games that we do select. Um, so maybe lead to a more interesting discussion. So, uh, how do you guys feel about 28? Before we get into like our overall games, how do you guys feel about 2018 in general? Just you know, across all platforms, you know, the releases. I thought it was pretty good. You know, I thought Nintendo had a really good year, more so, or mo more so um, towards the end, obviously with Smash and Pokemon. Uh, Sony had some amazing games with God of War and Spider Man, and Xbox had, I believe. Sea of Thieves was this year, right? Yeah, I think it was like summer or something. Yeah. How about you, Tom? Um, for me, it's mostly been just a, a little bit of Nintendo and Sony that I've, I've kind of um, purchased earlier today. Uh, not today, this year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, j just to... Uh, just to make clear at the start, I all of the games that were nominated for, for Game of the Year at the Game Awards, I haven't actually played too much of. So <laughs> there's um, a particular platformer on the Switch, which I'm sure one of you is going to mention, um, an, an indie platformer. I've only played about two minutes of that. Um, I haven't actually got the game. So I really want to put it on the list, on my list, but... Yeah, I, I haven't played it all the way through, so... Gotcha. Yeah, um, this year I thought was overall a really good year for the industry. I mean, Microsoft existed, so that's cool. <laughs> um, but Sony, I will agree, Sony had a gangbusters year, from God of War to Spider-Man yeah. to, like, Red Dead, um, which was, of course, on Xbox as well. Um, yeah, some really, really any... good titles. I haven't played any of those three. <laughs> <laughs> I... Yeah. Um, a spoiler alert, this isn't on my list because I haven't beaten it yet, um, but I have played Spider-Man somewhat. Um, my brother bought it on the PS4 and he lives like five minutes away from me, so I've been playing it intermittently, um, but I didn't feel like putting it on my list because I haven't actually beaten it yet. Um, as for Nintendo, I will say they had a good year, albeit a bit of an uneven year. Um, yeah. There were some good releases throughout the year, but of course, you know, the end of the year they finished as strongly as they could have. Um, mm -hmm. So what do you say? Do you guys want to get into our top threes? Yeah. Yep. So, do any of you want to start? Um, do, do you want to start? You're, you're the host. Sure, I'll go with my number three first. Um, so, okay, so just the you know, same thing as we did last year. Um, if we do have some... I have a feeling there will be some overlap in our lists. If my number three happens to be, like, your number one, I don't know. Um, you can talk, obviously join in the discussion, but kind of keep it a secret that it might appear later on your list. <laughs> Unless, of course, it's also your number three, then totally open up about that. Yeah, yeah it could right, be a little right. fun just to you know keep each other guessing. Um, so with that said, my number three is going to go to Octopath Traveler. Um, oh. I, this game came out at the perfect time for me. It came out in the summer, which was my busiest time of the year. So it was a really good game for me to just pick up for an hour or two. Um, which the game really lends itself well to with the, uh, the chapter system. Um, each chapter takes around an hour, but this game had a lot good going for it. The visual style, the music, um, oh my god, the music. Um, the I love the combat system. It's very, it's simple, but it offers enough strategy where you have to be thinking, you know, two or three steps ahead. Um, and I just really, really enjoyed Octopath. Yeah, yes. I, I, I played the demo of Octopath Traveler back when it had the word project in its title. So it was Project <laughs> Octopath. Um, and I... I have to say, I think that the um, the overall turn-based gameplay was a little bit too plain, like for for me. And I, I don't know. I just feel like it didn't have any massive gimmick to it overall. But the the visual style of the game and the music are downright phenomenal. It's so good. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I love how it's kind of gone for a very 
classic sort of Final Fantasy style, where it's all pixelated, but there's really nice lighting and colour going on. Is there ever? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I mean, it's... Oh, sorry, you go. Yeah, I mean, as someone that's also played the game, the art style is just absolutely fantastic, and I really hope we see some more remakes of classic RPGs in this art style. God, mm. I want a Final Fantasy VI remake. I mean, I know a lot of people have said this, but in yeah. the art style... Holy mackerel, that'd be amazing. <laughs> that'd be amazing, yeah. Um, imagine, gold, imagine Golden Sun in that art style as well. <laughs> oh, don't Ooh. get... No, 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 Ooh. don't get me dreaming. We're, the, gold, <laughs> the Golden Sun paint is still real right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that hurts. Um, I, I, to, to, to comment on what you said there, Tom, about the battle system, and maybe 77, you're going to uh, maybe ch chime in on this. Um, at the beginning of the game, I did find it very simple and almost mindless. But there are some mm. boss fights, especially in the chapters three and four of the characters, that really make you think ahead. Um, one yeah. that comes to mind is uh, Hornets chapter four. And again, maybe you can comment on this, 77. That battle was so brutal for me. Hornets final battle. Um, I really had to think and just like plan out like three steps ahead, like with all my party members. I was swapping them out. Like I, had, I lost like 10 times on that fight. Um, so, it definitely gets a little more interesting, um, but I can see from a first impression that it does come across as a little mm. simplistic. Yeah, in the beginning it's definitely a bit simplistic, but once you get to the, you know, more the final bosses, and especially once you get more classes, it just gets mind-blowing. Um, so I gotta ask 77, who were your favorite characters in this game? I think my top three would be Cyrus, mm, I want to say Tressa, and Obrick. Okay, that's interesting. That's completely different from mine. Um, I was going to say... Actually, I, I, I would put Tressa as number three. Um, for me, my number two would probably be Primrose. I know that's a very common answer, but I just yeah. really, really got into her story. It was super dark, super interesting. But my number one was Alfin. That story really surprised me. It got really dark in Chapter 3. And it, it, I just love how good of a guy Alfin is. Like He's just such a nice dude. I can't, I can't have anything against him. Yeah, he's not one of my favorite travelers, but I will say I think his story was actually the best because it felt the most real to me. Yeah, it did feel very real. It, it got surprisingly real. Um, yeah. Again, like I, I think his chapter three might actually be my favorite chapter in the game. Yeah. I think the demo of Octopath only had uh, Olberic and Primrose, so I don't really know the rest of the story in, in the game. But um, I, I, yeah, I, I quite liked it so far, but I didn't really... I didn't really know anything about the overall um, plot of the game coming together because mm -hmm. it was only two chapters. And so yeah. something else I want to talk about too is the amount of like extra content there is in this game. Um, like the amount of like exploring there is to do, like all the side dungeons, side quests. Um, there's like those uh, third classes that you can unlock at the end of the yeah. game. Um, I loved how much extra content there was. That was all great. Now, I also. I also liked how, um, it, from the demo and then comparing it to the final game, the team actually listened to user feedback. Yeah. So they that changed great. things like the uh, the normal running speed, uh, ju just lo loads of different things uh, like that. I think that's why they added a fast the... travel system. Yeah, the fast travel as well. Yeah. Um, now I gotta ask one more question to you, seventy-seven. Did you go? I think I think I saw this on Twitter, but you beat the final boss, right? Yeah, I beat the final dungeon. Oh man, I, I got okay. What levels were your guys? Um, it's been a while, but I want to say I had four of my, four of my party members at seventy plus, and then the other four were at like 60, 65. Really? Okay, maybe I'm not that far off. So I got to the final dungeon, and I I got through like the actual dun. I won't go into spoilers. I got through like the actual dungeon itself, but when I got to the final battle, I, I couldn't beat it. And then of course, when you lose, well. I'm sure you know what happens. Yeah. Um, so I kind of rage quit and didn't go back to it. <laughs> um, maybe I'll go back to it, because that's around the same as my party. Mine's like mid-60s, and I've got four of them that are like mid-70s. So maybe I'm not too far off. Yeah, it's really just about having um, really good weapons and armor, and it should be pretty easy. Okay. Well, do we have anything else we want to say on Octopath? No. All right. So, I don't have anything to say, so... So 77, what's your number three? Uh, my number three might be a game you even forgot came out this year, but it is Dragon Ball Fighters. 
Uh, so when Dragon Ball Fighters was announced, it was pretty much a dream come true for me and pretty much any Dragon Ball fan to finally have a, you know, a real competitive Dragon Ball fighting game since we've had a lot of casual ones in the past and they were pretty great, but they didn't really scratch that itch. Uh, and it being made by Arc System Works, who just does fantastic fighting games with just the icing on the cake. Uh, the, gr- the gameplay is great. Uh, character interactions in the story is great. Although, the gameplay in the story mode itself gets a bit um, tiring, I guess. It could be a bit more varied. Uh, music's great as well, and just an overall great package. This is a game that um, I have played it just a little bit. Um, my buddy is really big into Dragon Ball, so I've played it a bit with him. Um it seems like it's actually, I'm not a big fighting game person, but it actually seems fairly easy to get into, if relatively speaking to other fighting games. Yeah. Um, but I will say it is fun as hell to watch. Um, yeah. Like, I'm a very, very casual Dragon Ball fan. Like, I'm aware of the series, um, I'm aware of, like, the characters, but I haven't followed it very much since I was, you know, in the old days, back in, like, the old days, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. when it was still on TV. Um, but yeah, this is a game that is just so much fun to watch. I, I basically just don't know anything about Dragon Ball, so a lot of the things that are going to be said here are just going to be things that I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just been a great game, you know, it's been out for a year now, it's had a bunch of content updates, and the meta, I guess, for the game's just grown a lot, uh, the community's grown a lot, and I'm just very excited to see what uh, they do to the game next year. You're, you made a comment there at the beginning, I, I honestly thought this was a 2017 game, and then it came to the Switch this year. But it came out, yeah. I guess it was like January or something, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, okay. January like 12th, I think. Wow, really early this year. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite character that you use? I would say probably Tian Shino. Okay. Um, my my favorite character just from the show, again, I've maybe played like five or six rounds of this game. Uh, my favorite character from the show was Majin Buu. Uh, nice, I just nice. really, really got into him. Um, so that's who I tried out of, um, pretty much in Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, is he any good? Uh, he's, he's pretty good. Yeah, he doesn't get a lot of tournament play, but he has a lot of, uh, really good mix-ups, so once someone gets really good with him, I think we'll be seeing a lot more of him. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, do we, do we have anything else to say on Dragon Ball? I mean, me and Tom, I had a little bit to say, but I know, Tom, you're not really into it, so... <laughs> Is, uh, is it like a, a one-on-one fighting game, like like Street Fighter or Tekken, or is it more like a platform fighting game? Um, I don't think I've seen any footage. It's like Street Fighter, but you play as three characters at once. Oh, wow. Huh. So it's like a team-based fighting game? Mm-hmm. Sounds pretty good. Um, Alright, so I guess that's all for Dragon Ball, right? Yeah. Uh, Tom, what's your number three? Alright, so in number three for me... It's not actually a game on a Nintendo console, oh. um, and it's also, it's basically a really polished up remaster or remake, um, but it is Shadow of the Colossus on PS4. Nice. So, when, I, I know that this game was previously on the PS2 and PS3, but I never got around to playing it until, until the PS4 version, and I went into the game basically not knowing anything about Shadow of the Colossus, other than you other than the general idea of there's giant monsters you have to defeat them you ride a horse that's pretty much all i knew um and the game starts off with a really nice narrative cutscene. there's a girl that needs saving and this guy goes to a sacred land and he takes orders from a voice which tells him to defeat colossus Col- Col- colossi colossuses Mm-hmm. I don't know what the I don't know what the plural is. I think but, it's um, colossi, but yeah, colossi, yeah. Um, and it from, like from the back, it really sort of just chucks you into the gameplay really nicely, and it doesn't really change much. But it's more of an it's more of an art sort of game rather than a gameplay focused game. Okay, if that makes sense. It's kind of like um, it it creates a lot of deep metaphorical questions, like. Where is the sacred world? Why does the girl need saving? Um, the the one the one I had throughout playing the game was, is it really a right thing to do to destroy the sixteen giant creatures? Is it maybe it's like you you play as the villain and the creatures are innocent? Like mm-hmm. it had very 
deep, like, as I said before, it, it's got very deep metaphorical meaning behind it. Um, hmm. Have any of you two played the game? Or? Uh, so I actually own the PS3 version, and hmm. I played it for like an hour or two, but I couldn't really get into it. Um, but then I decided to actually buy the PS4 version, and I actually really started to click for me, and I think I played, I want to say, um, like, three of the Colossuses, Colossi, <laughs> in. Uh, I still have to go back to it, but I really did enjoy it, and I definitely uh, agree with what you mean about, I guess, the mysterious atmosphere the game yeah. gives off. It's like really, it's it's sort of like unsettling and yeah. really raises a lot of questions, um, and that's, I am, that sort of pushes you to get further. Yeah, I unfortunately have not uh, touched this game, um, not because of a lack of interest. Um, I just have never had a platform where I, you know, it's been available on. Mm. All I really know about this game is that it's just praised as like one of the best games of all time. Mm. Um, I never really knew about this like deep, mysterious, and philosophical to like the topics that it seems to tackle. I, all I really knew about is that you're just taking down these giant monsters. Um, and that, you know, at the time, visually, it was stunning, and it seems like the remaster has mm. just really maintained that. Um, yeah, so... Yeah. In terms of visuals, the game looks almost photorealistic. It's like they, they they haven't just ported the visuals from the PS2 and PS3 and just made them sharper. They've actually gone for like a fully remade, detailed uh, aesthetic. And see, that's um, what I really like because um, yeah. I, what I sometimes remasters are good. Sometimes they do minimal effort. And the one that I'm thinking of is Twilight Princess HD. Where, like, the mm. first time I looked at it, I was like, wait, this is HD? Yeah. Uh, so it's really, you know, it's good to hear that uh, it has gotten the overhaul that it deserves. Because mm. I've only I've only seen, like, trailers and gameplay. I haven't, again, I've never even touched this game, which is shameful, I know, because it is one of the greatest games of all time. Um, I got a question for you, though. How do you find the controls? Because a lot of people have complained the that controls. the controls are weird. Yeah, I... I sort of went into it thinking it would feel a bit like Zelda Breath of the Wild, um, where like and and I, I think I probably thought that because if it, if that was the case, it would have a really nice contrast between the playable character, which is just a small human, versus the colossi, which are giant, slow, really impactful, moving, uh, like creatures. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I thought like maybe the the main character you play as would be like really snappy and responsive like Zelda Breath of the Wild, but it it goes for a more realistic sort of animation style and it feels a tiny bit clunky, um, and, and the thing that you do in the game quite a lot, which it, which is similar to Breath of the Wild, is that you do a lot of climbing. Oh yeah, and yes, of course. <laughs> the, the climbing in Shadow of the Colossus, in my opinion, is not anywhere near as good as Zelda Breath of the Wild. No. It's much more slow, and when when the Colossi shake, like, you can't move at all, so you're stuck, and you can run out of grip easily, and mm -hmm. um, it, it definitely can feel very sluggish, um, but other than that, it's like, when you get used to it, it really, it feels immersive because of that. Wow. Well, uh, so, um, it's just so out of curiosity, uh, actually, no, I, I won't ask that till the end. Um, okay. But, um, yeah, Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, I didn't even know you played that this year. Yeah, I did. I think I put it on Twitter, or I, m I might have mentioned it on Twitter, but, yeah, um, I, 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 I don't think I mentioned what happened when I beat the, when I finished the game when I beat it because a lot of the story gets revealed at the end. Sure, um, okay. A lot of shocking moments, but yeah, um, I'll, I'll either leave you to play the game or look at it on YouTube. All right. Yeah. Well, what do you say? Are we ready to move on to our number twos? Yeah. All yeah. right. So my number two is gonna go to Celeste. Um, this game really really surprised me it came out similar to dragon ball it came out at the very beginning of the year in january mm. um and this game just blew me away in every like this is one of the very few games i've played where i actually don't think i have a single complaint about it um the and it, i got nom nominated for game of the year which really surprised me um i knew it wasn't gonna win um but it definitely deserved it um this game it just does platforming absolutely immaculately 
Like, it's very much, it very much follows like the Nintendo philosophy of like teaching you the mechanics through the gameplay and then getting mm. more and more difficult as it goes. Except this game is hard as hell. Like, this is like Meat Boy levels of hard. It's like precision platforming, but never once did it feel unfair. And this is a game that like has like dozens and dozens and dozens of levels. And it never once felt unfair, which is something I really have to applaud the game for. Um, I always felt like, you know, if I died, it was my fault. And speaking of death, the game knows you're going to die a lot, so you respawn in, like, less than a quarter of a second. It's super fast. Um, I, I could just go on and on about this game. And what something I really actually love is, um, a lot of people have compared this to Mario Odyssey, where in Odyssey, everything that you do is based around, uh, the cap throwing mechanic. In this, mm. it's everything is based around Madeline's dash. Uh, dash, her air dash. Yeah. And it's yeah. very surprising how many mechanics they can anchor around this one dash. Like, you'd mm -hmm. think, what can you, like, put around an air dash? But, like, there are eight unique worlds, all of which have a, a many different mechanics um, that use uh, that use this central action. And it's just really, really mind-blowing how well this game all comes together. And um, I swear I'll let you guys talk about this soon. I just got I got a rant and rave about this. Um, the story, um, I really, really the story totally caught me off guard because um, if you guys don't know, um, it's all about uh, Madeline uh, and the uh, struggles that she deals with. So she deals with depression and panic attacks, and the way the the way that those issues are represented, not just in the story. But in the gameplay, like, her panic attacks are actually built into the gameplay organically. And I won't spoil how, but it's actually brilliant um, how this all comes together. And it just tells a really impactful and meaningful story. It, it definitely made me a little emotional. I really wish I could put this onto my list. But I, yeah, as I said earlier, I've only played like two minutes at the start of Celeste. Um, it was at university. Some, someone had the Switch with them. Um, okay, but yeah, I, I've heard a lot about the story and how it deals with like like depression and anxiety and things like that, um, and it, it it does it really really like like it deals with those really really well. Yeah, um, but like I, I I from the two minutes I played of Celeste, it was really 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 good controls and it looked really nice for a sort of retro pixel art indie game. Um, really good use of colour, um, yeah. which, which is something that I, I love when looking at video game art styles. I, I always look for how well does it use colour. Um, and I've I've heard this one song from the soundtrack, which was I can't remember I can't remember the name of it. I think it was one of the the B side levels. Oh, it was um, probably Chapter Three B side. That's a really big song. <laughs> it's like a, it's it's got like a sort of slow electronic sort of feel to it and i remember listening to it um in headphones like someone uploaded a clip on twitter and i thought wow that's just one song from the soundtrack i've got to hear the rest of it um it it, it just really really um amazed me with how good the music was just from that small little bit i heard what about you 77 have you played this unfortunately i have not but you two talking about it definitely makes me want to play it even more than i did before because i've Heard so many great things about the game, uh, from its music to gameplay and its story. But just just hearing you guys talking about it really makes me want to play it. Oh, like th this is a must-play game. Um, like for anyone who likes platformers, likes good stories. Like, it, let like let me be clear. This game was not on my radar at all. And then when it came out and it was getting all of these like ten out of tens, I was like, all right, I gotta check this out. And it is one hundred percent warranted. Um, those like those amazing scores like this this might be my like if it's not my favorite indie game it's in my top three of all time like this is such an amazing game and like you guys were saying the music like not only is the music just good but it always fits the atmosphere um whether you're in a very tense platforming sequence it, it ramps up a bit or if you're in maybe a, of a more like methodical part of the game where like you know maybe you have some time to think the music slows down like i really really just love how the music was handled in this game um and something i think people don't even know that much that haven't played the game 
is that there are actually boss sequences in this game. Um, but they're not boss fights in like the traditional platforming sense. Um, I don't really want to say much more than that, but I really love how they handled uh, the boss encounters in this game too. Um, just everything, there's even, okay, I, this was something that really truly just, like I, I screamed when I saw this. <laughs> there is the most cool Mario reference in this game. Like, uh, you'll know it when you see it, but there is the coolest Mario reference in this game. Those of you I'm, listening I'm that have played it. Christmas, so. You what? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting this game for Christmas, so I'm going to look out for that uh, Mario Easter egg. Like, like, it is, as soon as you come to it, you're like, you're going to know what it is, what you need to do. It is so cool. Huh. Um, speaking about the soundtrack again, I've heard that the... The composer for the soundtrack was actually dealing with the same things that Madeline was dealing in the game. So the soundtrack actually applied the, the the composer for the soundtrack actually applied their feelings into the music that they were making. You can definitely feel that. And there's actually yeah. one song. Maybe this got actually a, this is actually like really creepy. But one of the songs in the game, if you play it backwards, there's actually lyrics to the song that you wouldn't be able to hear it going like if it's playing forward. Um, but when you find that, like, it gives you chills. Just, like, how how this was made into the game. Um, mm -hmm. There's just so many cool things to discover, and just so many impactful, meaningful things in this game. It's just amazing. I've also found the name of that one song, which I heard on Twitter. Um, it's called Golden Ridge, Golden Feather Remix. Oh, the, uh, okay. Yep. Side 4, it says, In Love With A Ghost. Yeah. Um, so I, I I heard that on someone's like gameplay clip on Twitter, and just from that one song, I, I was sold on the soundtrack. And I, I've listened to a, a little bit of the rest of it on Twitter uh, on YouTube, but um, I'm worried that listening to too much will be spoilers. So. I, oh yeah, just I've play the game. Listened... <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna play the game at Christmas. Yeah. Good, good. Well, do you have anything else you want to say on Celeste there, seventy seven? No, I, I just need to buy it. <laughs> That's what I need to do. Oh, uh, you do that. Uh, so I guess, yeah, what's your number two there, uh, 77? Uh, so my number two is a game that has already showed up, and that is Octopath Traveler. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't say too much on this since it'll pretty much just be reiterating what we already said. Uh, but it is probably one of the f my favorite RPGs I've ever played. Uh, the music is just fantastic, especially the music that plays when you go up against... Um, the enemies to get the additional classes at the end. I absolutely love that track. Um, I love the battle system, love the job system, uh, and the overall story is just great. My only, uh, I guess, gripe with the game is, so you said you've made it to the final dungeon, right? Yeah, I, I made it there, tried it, didn't beat it. Uh, obviously the final dungeon, even if you don't complete it, kind of ties up all the stories together, in a way. Yeah. And I just wish they kind of made that, um, not like post game content i wish they made that into like an official chapter five as part of the game because obviously you can get the credits for the game and never actually play that and that's kind of disappointing to me yeah i, I will say um and i guess this is something we really we really didn't touch on it was interesting seeing all the characters go through their stories but there was no overlap and there was no like interaction um between there was very very light interaction if you're maybe at like a tavern or something yeah um and i was kind of hoping i you know i had heard that you know this final dungeon this true final dungeon did kind of tie up the loose ends but it's just it's just kind of through like this dialogue um that's like just kind of there like it, it, i don't want to say too much to, to avoid spoilers but yeah i will say that final dungeon didn't wrap things up quite as much as i had maybe hoped or in the way that i had hoped uh, I mean, for me personally, I thought the story within the dialogue in the dungeon did tie things up pretty well, um, or at least, I don't know, made a pretty good ending. I was just disappointed that it had no voice acting. I, I thought that was kind of weird. Like that, that, I guess that's what I meant. Um, uh, like, I did like what was there, but I didn't like the presentation of it, I guess. Right, right. Um, what... Sorry, what were you going to say? Uh, which is why I feel like they almost didn't make it a Chapter 5. It's because they maybe just didn't have enough time to, you know, present it correctly. Yeah, maybe that was it. Um, but yeah, uh, something you also mentioned too was the job system, which I didn't really touch on. But that was really, really good. Um, I, I liked how you could explore and get all these additional jobs and then get those like 
ultra jobs or whatever they were. Um, yeah. yeah. And you could really customize your party um, however you wanted. Um, so that was something I think that was, you know, I, I don't play too, too many JRPGs, um, but I really liked how um, how in-depth this uh, game went with the job system. Um, and you could, like, you could even, like, teach, give a job to someone, teach them skills, and then equip them with a different job, but still maintain the skills unique to their previous job. Um, so you could really go in-depth with the customization. Yeah, and I really like that because in the beginning of the game, I was worried since you can only have um, half of your eight travelers at once, you know, maybe there'd be a lot of times where you have to backtrack and then switch them out to get certain abilities, but pretty much any character in the game outside of, of very few abilities can learn any ability in the game. Yeah. No, I really, really enjoyed Octopath. Um, I mean, Tom, we already went in on this, but is there anything you want to say? <laughs> um, not really, no. I mean, I, I've only played the demo, so I can't really give any thoughts on the rest of the game. Well, so, I guess we can move on to your number two then, just, Tom. So, my number two is, yet again, a game that isn't on Nintendo at the moment. It's not on the Switch. Um, I'd like for, I'd like it to come to the Switch one day, but um, it's technically three remade games in one um, involving a purple dragon. Ooh. You know what this is? Spyro yeah. Reignited Trilogy. Oh, I was going to say Barney, so, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dinosaur. Oh, dude, dude, never mind. Sorry, you go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I, like, when I was growing up, I was more of a Crash Bandicoot person, and then okay. Sonic, and then now it's Kingdom Hearts and Zelda and so on. Um, and I, I never really... I never really managed to properly try out Spyro when I was young. Like, I, I knew of Spyro, but I never owned any Spyro games apart from, like, a Game Boy Advance spin-off. Um, so I, I missed out on the original three Spyro games, and I've only got around to actually experiencing them this year with the uh, Reignited Trilogy on PS4. Um, and I, I really didn't know much about Spyro before going into it. Um, a lot like Shadow of the Colossus, really. Like, I didn't really know anything about that. Um, but within the first few days, I 100% completed Spyro 1 because I enjoyed it so much. Nice. Like, I, I had so much fun with the game, like, just going straight into it that I, I just did, just wanted to go around every single level and do everything as much as I could. Dude, I... So I have not played... I, I play a little bit of the Reunited Trilogy. I, again, uh, my brother picked it up, so I've been playing it whenever mm. I'm over at his place. But the original Spiral the Dragon Trilogy are some of my favorite PS1 games and some of my favorite 3D platformers ever. They're just... Especially 2 and 3. Spyro 1, I think, is aged maybe a little bit, but I think 2 and 3 are, like, amazing, amazing games. Um, there's just, like you said, like, once you start a level, like, you're hooked, and you just want to mm. see every little sight there is to see. Um, and especially when a game is this gorgeous, like, I, you definitely want to yeah. see everything there is. Um, the so this is something I am definitely hoping comes to the Switch, because I will be there day one, uh, to pick it up. And I have a feeling it is, everything seems to be pointing towards it. Um, so, yeah, really, really amazing game. Uh, I, I look at, looking at it now, I definitely see why people loved Spyro back like twenty odd years ago. I think it was like eighteen years ago, I think. Um, and I, I, yeah, I definitely see why people love it. It's just a really cool, colorful, like '90s 3D platformer. Like it has a lot of, um, like it, it's sort of got a bit of Banjo Kazooie vibes to it, but not really. Like Collectathon. 3D platformer vibes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and uh, like as you said as well, the new graphics and the animations in this re in this remake are, are so good. It's almost like a Pixar film. It, it's like that they've they've got the original game running with a completely different and freshed up coat of paint. Oh yeah, it, it looks as close to movie quality as you can basically yeah. get these days. <laughs> uh, what about you, seventy seven? Uh, see, I've actually played a little bit of it, and I really have to just give a hand to Activision in making not only this game, but Crash, because I really thought I really thought they'd just make a, a senseless cash grab or something, but they really put a lot of love and work into these games, and they are just fantastic, and they really just revived the franchises, you know, after 
Uh, both of them were kind of in Skylanders and went down that road. Oh. It's really nice to see them back in their former glory. Yeah, is it's, it? It's so good to have them both back and not as their Skylanders designs. Yeah, because God. I, yeah. I, I, I might have mentioned this before, but Spyro in Skylanders just looks like a little purple pug with wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> He's got it like, doesn't yeah, that, look like Spyro. That weird, like flat nose. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, I gotta say too, um, I love just how all I've listened to a bit of the music um, on YouTube, and they've remastered it. But it's very it, it's very authentic to the original soundtrack. Um, and I think you can yeah. even use the original soundtrack in this game, can't you? Yep. Yeah, that's yep. really cool. It's between the two. Yeah. And you can and they also um, revoiced. Uh, they did all the voice actors like lines again, but they still had like the same voice actors, at least for Spyro. Yeah. I know. Um, but in was it for Spyro all of them? One, in Spyro One, he had a different voice actor, but in in the Reignited trilogy, they used the voice actor for Spyro Two and Three in the Spyro One cutscenes. Which I got, I don't know if you guys know this, but that's the same voice actor as SpongeBob SquarePants. Yep. That, yep. Which is really I definitely I appreciate, and I know you will. Yeah. Uh, Seventy seven. Did you so. know gaming? Indeed. Coming in with the facts. <laughs> Did you know gaming? Um, but yeah, and, and what I like about I, I think you mentioned that Spyro One maybe didn't hold up as well as Spyro 2 and 3. I think that Spyro 1 like still feels really good to this day. Like the level design is really good, has a lot of secrets. Um it it definitely feels like it came from the 90s, like Super Mario 64. I think um, maybe the only reason I feel that and again, I on the Reignited trilogy, I I've, I've only dabbled in all three of them, but the first Spyro game didn't actually have DualShock support. Um, so mm. it was a. I, I'm pretty sure I'm remembering that right, but I think that's why it was a little harder for me to go back to. Um, but I mean, obviously, I I need to actually play the remaster to to with analog sticks to actually get the you know real answer for that. Um, so I'm mm. hoping it comes to the Switch sooner rather than later. Again, I think all signs point to it. Um, so yeah. Um pretty much it i so I've, I've mentioned that i've completed spyro 1 100 and i'm just about nearly done with spyro 2 um but with spyro 3 i haven't actually started that yet i've seen a lot of footage of that but uh, apparently spyro 3 is the best one i agree it's the best one um and i've seen that there's there's like multiple playable characters in that there um, are so I, yeah. I can't wait to start that uh, can't wait to can't wait to start spyro 3 you're in for a treat. Um, I, yeah. I go back and forth on two and three. I, I think three is objectively the better game. Um, I think I just have a little more nostalgia for number two, but they're, they're both just absolutely amazing games. And if I, you know, if push came to shove, I think I would give the better game to number three. Um, it's really, really good. Yeah. A, a first impressions for me, Spyro one and two are just really enjoyable, and yeah, that, that's why I put them as game of, as number two in my list. So, there's a certain game that has not appeared on any of our lists that we may or may not have been absolutely going crazy with for the past two weeks. Um, uh, it's the, uh, the phenomenal Switch game that was out on December 7th, I, I, where I, is everything the, comes together in one giant mishmash. Is this the third year in a row where everyone on the call has had the same game of the year? <laughs> Katamari Damacy Reroll? Exactly. Oh, uh, yeah, man, you nailed, you nailed it. Yeah, um, it, it. Everything comes together. So just, just so I don't actually assume anything, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is all of our game of the year, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Definitely. Um, boy, oh boy, where do we even start with this game? I mean, I was about to say that. Where, like, where do we even start? The, let Let's start with the roster. I mean, like everyone yeah. is here. What was, was your guys' reaction when you first saw that? Well, the my, my reaction to the initial announcement trailer where it just had inkling in that dark room with the smash ball logo that is probably the most shocked reaction i've had throughout the entire year at anything <laughs> like i i it was quite late at the night so like, like when the direct happened in the uk so i couldn't really make any noise because i think my sister was asleep my parents were getting ready to go to bed um but i i was just sat on my bed just in shock that uh, direct, uh, like that, tra tra that trailer of the Inkling was the reason why I had to buy a new microphone. I actually broke my <laughs> microphone <laughs> yeah, from that I direct. That video. Um, if you, yeah, if you guys remember that reaction, so that that's why I had to actually buy a new microphone. Um, so my hype was definitely real. 
Oh, man. The, the hype for that trailer was absolutely amazing, but when I saw the Everyone Is Here trailer, I felt like I was almost about to cry. That that trailer was absolutely amazing. Oh, God. Like, they they even said, I think, in the presentation, like, we believe this is what players want. I was like, yes, Sakurai, you nailed it. You are a beautiful man. You nailed it. <laughs> um, and then just every every announcement, like, that E3, that E3 Direct was awesome, but then they followed it up with, I would argue, an even better Direct in August. Yeah. Um, with Castlevania getting representation, and then, mm. I mean, if you guys saw my reaction to King K. Rool, like, he's, he was my dream character since Brawl, and I, I just, like, ugly cried on, on camera, <laughs> it was, I just, I couldn't hold it in, like, I've wanted King K. Rool for over ten years, um, and I love playing as him now, they absolutely nailed him, he is just beautiful in every way, uh, <laughs> and I, like, oh god, I am just so in love with everything that this game has done. Yeah, the, the Castlevania and King K. Rool Direct, that was actually, that was like in the summer, I think, or like yeah. July, August, um, and I was at university at the time, so we all sat around like each other's laptops, like we had one laptop on one side of the table and another laptop on the other side, and we were all watching the Direct at the same time. <laughs> um, and I know that there were some people in the room that weren't really into Nintendo and Smash Bros, but there were people who were really into it. Um, and we we sort of heard from there was a bit of a le like some leaks beforehand saying that Castlevania was going to make it in. Yeah. Um, but there was always that one person in the room which was like, oh yeah, the leaks were real. I yeah, told you this was coming, and like wasn't surprised. But um, yeah, I I was really happy with the uh, with the second direct where they had Castlevania. And um, I gotta say, too, like, they have absolutely nailed the representation for Castlevania. Like, first mm. of all, with that direct, we all kind of figured Simon was coming, but I don't think anyone expected Richter. No. Um, so that was really, really cool. But then just, you know, how it's been represented in the actual game itself, Dracula's Castle is so cool. The music, oh my god, the music. Like, the Symphony of the Night is one of my favorite games of all time. And just see, like, hearing the remixes from that, but also from, like, the original trilogy, like, Oh my god, like this is just, I have been fanboying over this game for so long. Um, and not only, like, this game just seems to be, like, everywhere. Like, whenever I pop on my friends list, everyone's playing this game. Mm -hmm. um, it's, everyone's here, everyone's playing it, and, like, everything is here, every, the, everything is in this game. I just. Everything is everything. Oh my god, <laughs> right? <laughs> But when the game came out, I actually invited my cousin round um, to, to my house to actually play it. Um, and when like when I turned on the Switch and looked at my friends list, I think it was about 20 people online at the same time. And that was the <laughs> most, the highest amount of people I've ever seen online. Same with me. All at yeah. once. And every single one of them was playing Smash Ultimate. It's, it, was, it was so crazy. Um, but, uh, what, what else was I going to say? Um, I, I think, oh wait, yeah, technically, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the first true Metroidvania game, because it has Metroid and Castlevania in the same game. <laughs> that is true. But, like, it's actual Metroidvania. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Uh, 77, what, what about you? How are you feeling about the roster just in general? Uh, the roster is absolutely fantastic. I mean, you know, you were bringing up Richter before, and he is a character who, you know, I knew nothing about when he was revealed, but I, I liked him so much, I went and played his original game being Rondo of Blood, and, you know, just playing that and getting into Castlevania, it is now probably one of my favorite series ever, and it just helped me to appreciate a lot of the Castlevania stuff in Smash so much more. Um, and I just think they made a lot of really good selections from Ridley to K. Rule to Inkling uh, to many others. Yeah, I, I I have not played Rondo of Blood. The only time I've actually played as Richter is the boss, the first boss fight in Symphony of the Night. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I really do need to go back and play Rondo of Blood because I have just heard amazing things, and th th like this has gotten my hype along with a lot of people for Castlevania just so much higher. Um, yeah. Like I've only I've only played I have played one, two, and three. I played Castlevania four, Symphony of the Night, and Aria of Sorrow. Um, so there's still a lot of games in the series that I still need to play. Um, but yeah, I, th this has just really given me so much more of a reason to get into Castlevania. But uh, the newcomers that they chose this time around, even though there weren't as many, all of them I think were really, really good picks. Um, yeah. I mean, again, Ridley, he was probably, no pun intended, the biggest Nintendo character that wasn't yep. in Smash. <laughs> um, along with the Inklings, of course. Anymore. 
Um, and then, of course, you got King K. Rule, which has just been a fan favorite. Well, you got Simon and Richter, I, and the Castlevania was, was actually, like... The... I was actually really surprised with Isabel. Like, yeah. When, when that trailer happened at the end of a direct, there was no, like, Smash Ultimate cross before the reveal. So you just think it's like a new Animal Crossing finally getting revealed. Um, and then it's just... She gets a letter for Smash. Just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's so funny seeing Isabel from Animal Crossing with Snake from Metal Gear and Ridley. Like a, a secretary like, versus a space dragon and a war yep. veteran. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just amazing. The, and, and the Wii Fit trainer as well. I, I still think the Wii Fit trainer is the weirdest character that's that's been added. Just, well, I know she was in Smash Wii U as well, but just still to this day, the Wii Fit trainer. Just. So who have you guys been maining? Mario. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Just, just Mario, pretty much. Uh, mainly I can crumb so far and a little bit of Richter. Man, Crom is really good. Um, yeah. I, I need to pick him up more because he is just like, he really has like no problems with him. Um, yeah. I, I really need to like train a little bit more with Crom because I used him in classic mode and I kept falling off the stage. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know if it was just because I was playing in handheld mode and at the time. And it was hard to see where I was, um, but I think his his up special doesn't have as much horizontal movement as I. No, have. not at all. And it's like if you get knocked off the stage a lot with Crom, it's kind of hard to get back up. Yeah, I mean um, you got to just stay on the stage a but lot. I'm I'm not really into the Fire Emblem characters in Smash that much. I mean I I like how uh, Corin plays. Like I quite like Corin, but. Um, I, I don't really play too many of the Fire Emblem characters. Um, yeah. For me personally, uh, Yoshi and K. Rule have kind of been the two I've been using. I mean, I've been a Yoshi main since Melee, and I love what they've done with Yoshi in this game. I, I think he's... I think a lot of people are thinking he's really good, but I think he's very, very good in this game. Um, and K. Rule, I mean, I just... He, he is pretty gimmicky, and uh, usually heavyweights aren't the best characters, but I think he's one of, if not the best heavyweight we've ever had in Smash. Mm. Um, that, yeah. That... Um, that cannonball and crown combo like you can rack up some serious damage with those projectiles um and then of course he has two attacks that bury um which is just amazing um <laughs> his down throw and his down tilt can both bury an opponent and then you can just follow that up with a smash attack um so yeah i really am enjoying king k rule um i've also been trying to um i, I like mewtwo in this game too I, I liked him a lot in smash wii u and i think mm. he's just overall better in this game um, I could be wrong about that. I'm, I like to call myself an informed scrub. Um, <laughs> n n I'm not amazing, but I do kind of get it, I guess. Um, but I think Mewtwo's been given a bit of an overhaul in this game. I like how he plays. I quite like Kirby, Pikachu, and Sonic as well. I feel like they've, they've definitely improved since Smash Wii U. Okay, um, can we talk about how much of a god Pichu is in this game, though? Like... Yeah, I, I was... I. When I first played Pichu, I thought he was going to be, like, the same sort of joke character that he was in Melee. Like, where he's he's kind of weak, he can take damage quite easily, he can get launched. But um, after watching... Have you guys seen Alpha Rad's video? Uh, that's Pichu? exactly what I was thinking of, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> how to play Pichu 101. He's a lot more overpowered than I thought. Like, he, he can really just wail on characters, pretty much. Yeah, um, I, I've like I, I've played against a few Pichus online, and it's almost humiliating losing the one. Like, like I was getting KO'd at like sixty, and like, <laughs> like what the hell? Like you're a Pichu, you're a baby, you hurt yourself I, from attacking. But like, oh my I think, god! I think they've definitely increased Pichu's power to make up for the fact that he takes damage, like when when he attacks. I, they definitely have, yeah. I guess. And uh, uh, Bill Trinan has even been like saying on Twitter, like I'm super excited for Pichu's return. And I thought he was... I, I didn't really... You know, okay, cool, Peachy's coming back. But no, apparently he's just really good. Um, so what do you guys think about some of the single-player content? I think it's fantastic. Um, I love, love the addition of spirits. Um, I do know we had to sacrifice trophies to get it, but I just think mm -hmm. it adds so much. I mean, it's like basically a hundred, a hundred event matches. And it's just great. Mm. I, I, it's a bit of a shame that they've had to get rid of trophies for this. Like, I know it, it must have taken a while to develop every single trophy and the descriptions, 
but I think at least like character trophies could have been included. It's a bit of a shame that they're not in that. Just like the the main playable characters. Yeah. Um, and like just just a little description of where they're from, what what they did in their games. That would have been nice, but it's like. I, I think that Smash Ultimate definitely caters towards more competitive Smash players. That's why they focused on the huge roster, the huge amount of levels, and, and the gameplay, especially. I, I guess where I fall on that is that, like, when I was watching that Direct at first, I, I was a little bummed about the lack of trophies, but playing the game, I, it hasn't really bothered me, honestly. Like, I've still had just as much yeah. fun collecting spirits as I have uh, trophies. Um, and obviously, they are just ultimately a picture. Um, but I still just, you know, it's always surprising to see who pops up as a spirit. Um, and some of them are really surprising. Um, mm. I mean, like, some of my favorite... Really I've, obscure ones as well. Like, like the fact that, like, like really we got Shovel Knight as an assist trophy, but there are other knights in this game from Shovel Knight that are spirits, which totally surprised me. Um, but, like, t talking about, like, just spirit mode as a general, and this translates to World of Light as well, a lot of those battles are so clever. Um, mm. like, I, there was one where, what was it, where, like, you're fighting a Snorlax spirit, so it's a giant K rule that doesn't move, um, and it just has a ton of HP, so you just have to kill it in, a, in like, the short amount of time that you have. Uh, or fighting, like, the Geno spirit, how it's, like, the entire Super Mario RPG party, like, there, there are just some really, really brilliant ones, and I saw earlier today, um, I won't spoil it, 77, I saw you beat World of Light, that ending, though! Yeah, that was oh, that I, was absolutely amazing. I haven't amazing. beaten it yet. I haven't beaten World of Light. Uh, so I won't. I won't spoil it. Don't worry. <laughs> that I'm, like I'm about like sixty or seventy percent through. I think. Okay, th th that final. Just, just, yeah. That final hour. Oh my god! Like, it, it first the first part again. The first part really surprised me with what you're able to do, but then like the final segment just. Oh my god! It was so epic. Yeah, I mean, World of Light is just really great in my opinion, and, you know, based on the trailers we got from the Direct, I was expecting it to be more just like its own original thing in terms of the maps, but I was just so surprised to see how many references to other games they packed inside this map. There was one, <laughs> um, I actually saw this on Twitter, um, it was a, I haven't played Metal Gear Solid games at all, but there was a character from Metal Gear Solid that I guess has like a bomb implanted in them in the game. So when you're fighting that spirit, they start with a bob bomb, and I'm like, oh my god, like, <laughs> that is so dark, like, good for you, Smash, but oh my god, like, uh, the, the, the spirits are just really, really brilliant, and I, I gotta say, like, I, I'm, I'm gonna be bouncing, like, all over the place here, I love how much love Mega Man got, like, the Mega Man series got yeah. in Smash Ultimate, like, and not just the classic Mega Man series either, like, there was a ton of X spirits, um, we even got some, like, um, from the Battle Network series, we got some stuff from Mega Man Legends. Um, and there was even, oh my god, that remix of the intro stage from Mega Man X. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't great. think I've heard that one yet. Oh, I'm, it's so good. I might, I'll, I'll, I might have to get that up on YouTube. Oh, it's so good. Like, Mega Man X, of course, is one of my favorite games of all time, so just seeing the representation it got in this game, uh, really, really pleased. Um... What else is there to talk about? Classic mode. What do you guys think about classic mode? I love that it's unique for every character. Yeah, that was one thing which I, I definitely like compared to Smash Wii U and 3DS, which had a really sort of... Um, the, the, the classic mode in 3DS and Wii U was like really mixed up and kind of random, um, whereas the classic mode in Ultimate, it's like much more streamlined how it should be. But it was also unique for every single fighter. It, it like very, it, had... it yeah. um in, in older games it very much felt like like I beat every single classic mode and all star mode in Smash Wii U and it felt like a slog to get through. In this game, mm. I'm always excited to see what classic mode has to offer. Um, like again, getting back to the Mega Man stuff, Mega Man's classic mode is brilliant. It is. Yeah, I I tried that. Yeah. It is so brilliant for anyone who's a Mega Man fan. Um, just trying to think like. Of, like the... Some other clever the ones bonus there. Game, the bonus game is like in the middle of, of Mega Man's classic mode and not at the end. I, re I remember that. Yeah. Um, and just the way, like, I love the... Uh, I, I can't spoil it because it's just... It, if you're a Mega Man fan, that, that the way they handled the final battle was so cool. Um, mm. I also really liked... Um, oh, I'm trying to think of another really cool one. There's uh, Wolf as well, which has, uh, like, 
returning characters from Brawl. Yeah, yeah, like all the yeah. cut characters. That was really cool. Um, I still have a bunch of them to go through. Um, Zero Suit Samus has a, a, cl a classic mode about like uh, like tether attackers, like with like long grabs and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, I'm trying to think of some more. What about U77? What do you think about the classic mode? I have only currently done one, and that was Link. But I think my favorite thing is that just the ending for all of them are different. Like, Link's mm. ends with a certain boss battle. I won't say who, uh, oh, but it's not so that hard good. to guess, obviously. Um, and I just really like that. You know, I can imagine the Castlevania characters probably end with Dracula. And just stuff like that I find is really nice. Oh, my God. The one that surprised me the most was the one at the end of Kirby's um, classic mode. Which you also, Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you fight it in World of Light, but I fought it in classic mode first. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> it was so cool. Um, um, yeah, classic one mode. Thing about, one little thing about classic mode, though, is that the, the bonus game where you're, like, running away from the black hole. Um, it's a shame that that one isn't different for every single fighter. Like, it's the same layout of the level to run through. Like, yeah. I feel it, like it, it, it kind of gets old, like, when you play it too many times. It definitely does. It, it Like, I, I guess I've gotten good at it now, but, like, yeah, it does get yeah. pretty, pretty repetitive. Like, I guess it has, like, a sort of, uh, like, Green Hill Zone or Super Mario Bros. World 1-1 effect, where you've played it so many times, you just get better and better at it. Yeah. Like, so you, you learn the layout from memory, and I, I, I guess that's probably why they did that. So you, once you've learned the layout, you can just breeze through it with every other character. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it would have been just a... I, I feel like it would have been a little bit better and a little bit more unique if every character had a different uh, bonus game. Um, um, and there's also no uh, break the targets as well. So I, I was going to say, like, there's a lack of modes in this game. Like, you know, we don't yeah. have break the targets, we don't have home run contests, but like... The modes that are here, I think they've just done so well that it hasn't really bothered me that much um, that these other modes aren't here. Um, like, again, World of Light, I, I know a lot of people, a lot of reviewers said that they, they, they were getting like bogged down by it and that it felt like old, but I think that's probably because they had to rush through it. I played through it in very, you know, maybe half hour to 40 minute bursts, and um, yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed doing that. I, and then, of course, the final section maybe took me about an hour and a half. But I was that final section was just so good that like it didn't really bother me. Um, I what do you guys think? Like, do you guys miss the home run and break the targets? I, uh, I feel like they should have come back for this to to really make it ultimate. I think like it, it's it's ultimate in terms of the character roster, the amount of levels, and the story mode. Uh, it's just a, a few things are are missing, pretty much. So. I think Oh, sorry, no, you go, you go. I think for me, um, you know, as far as Break the Targets, I'm actually pretty happy it didn't come back, because if it did, it probably would have just been, like, the same stage for every character. But now, you know, there's a chance that maybe they could bring it back later as DLC, and they can actually be unique for every character, and I would just love that. I really don't understand why Home Run Contest is not here, though. I, I thought that'd be pretty easy, but I don't, I don't know. Well, so I guess I kind of... I know this isn't a predictions discussion, but I do predict that we are going to get a mix of... Uh, free and of course we know the paid DLC, but I think there. I don't think that's everything we're getting. I think there will be some free updates, you know, a, as we go. And I, I do think that if we want, if we want this to, like, when all is said and done, if we want this to be the true ultimate Smash game, I think those modes will return in some form or fashion um, yeah. at some point. Um, and so that's why I guess I'm not too bummed that they're not here. Like I already have so much to do already. Um, in Smash Ultimate, like, I have I checked before this discussion, I've already played for over 80 hours, and there's Dang. still just so much that there is to do. Um, I think with me, it's like 42 hours, I think, like when I, I last checked. Like so. I, I'm just thinking about this now, but I haven't even touched Smashdown yet. Um, I, I've played, oh, me neither. I've played Squad, Squad Strike, but I have not even touched Smashdown yet, um, so I'll need to do that. Jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, one thing about the extra modes as well in Smash Ultimate, which I, I sort of don't like as much and I, I tweeted about this a few days ago the all-star mode in smash ultimate yeah they yeah kind of ruined it i think because all-star mode in the past was a really unique mode in that you went through the entire roster but through each match through each like group of matches the damage stayed the same like the damage didn't reset 
so you really had to manage like what health items you were going to use or whether or not to use them um you had to like really reserve them i think i, I guess and, like for- yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, you go. Yeah. I, I guess, um, like, I can kind of get where they're coming from because we have over 70 characters now. It would be mm. a little hard for All-Star to exist in the form that it used to. But at the same time, I, I, I get, yeah, like, it just feels, it just feels like Century Smash, but with characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but what's kind of disappointing, too, is that, like, once you finish all of the characters, it just loops around. It doesn't even finish. Uh, like, it just loops oh, back. To, yeah, it just loops back to the beginning of the roster. Oh. Um, oh. So it's um, I, I actually haven't seen that for myself. I just saw um, some people on Twitter saying that, but um, that that is a bit of a bummer. There's a really easy way that could get the like the true classic All Star mode working as well. Like say say if it's taking a really long time to get through all all 76 fighters, you could basically like take a break through someone's like All Star mode progress. Like, say you're playing as Mario and you're about 50% done, you can quit halfway through and then come back to it at, at a later time. So mm-hmm. basically, like, a, a mini save feature for every single character. And that would be um, okay. That'd be good, yeah. 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 Um, but, yeah, that that's, like, basically my only real nitpick with Smash Ultimate so far is that the, the new style of All-Star mode is just... It's not really very fun. Like, for... For me, the reason Smash Ultimate beat out Celeste is, like, I said before, like, Celeste, I didn't really have any complaints with it. Smash Ultimate, I have a few very minor complaints, but the highs are just so much higher. Yeah. Um, like, I really just... Th- this is a game I'm going to be playing for, like, a long time. Like, this is already yeah. my favorite Smash game. Just, you know, we haven't even talked about the mechanics yet of the game. Like, I love, like, all of the changes they made from the directional air dodge to... Yeah, the, the like, the, air dodge. To, like, the, being punished for dodging too much to just how fast the game feels like it just final smash meter yeah final smash meter like there's just so many awesome changes that have made this i like i don't care if you're a hardcore melee fan this is the definitive smash game like this is <laughs> i i'm not gonna speak for you too turn off stage hazards and you can turn off stage hazards like yeah like nintendo and sakurai totally listen to the fans this time <laughs> like with every you know from the characters to the mechanics to the the additions to like the gameplay like they have listened to us and it's just really formed an amazing package i don't see any reason to go back to smash wii u mm. yeah now i have a question for all of you where would you um rank super smash bros ultimate's opening mm. so i wouldn't say it's the best uh, melee is still the best opening um just i mm. love that cg cutscene but i got to say i watch ultimates Almost every time I turn on the game, like I don't skip it, and I think it's just because of that song. Like I love yeah. Life Light so yeah. much. Like even though it's not a CG or it's made up of like gameplay and parts of World of Light, I don't think I mind it as much as I thought I would. Like it's probably I think it would, yeah. I would say it's my second favorite after Melee. It's still I've... a very well presented intro. It's just a shame that it isn't all original CGI like yeah. Melee was. Um, but the the. The intro theme as well, like Life Light, as well as the, uh, the main menu theme, I've listened to it so much, and it's like just ingrained into my head now, like or, almost as much as like Smash Wii U's theme or Brawl, like that. That's how many times I've heard Smash Ultimate's theme. So good, yeah. Did... Especially when I've made a remix of it. Where do you fall on it, seventy-seven? I'd say it's probably my third favorite after Melee and Brawls as well, or somewhere around there. Yeah, Smash we use was I don't even really remember it. <laughs> like I, I, I like <laughs> yeah, I like the theme. Either. I like the theme, but I don't really remember like the intro. Nah, um, it's just a bunch of gameplay, I believe. Yeah, the, something like that. The yeah. Smash Wii U intro started with Shulk, which was just a, a bit <laughs> of a weird start. Yeah, it's like, a pretty obscure one to start with. Yeah. Um. Okay, I gotta ask. This is something we haven't touched on yet. How have you guys been finding the online? Because I have heard impressions ranging from amazing to terrible. Um, so where do you guys kind of fall on it? Let's start with you, Tom. Um, so I've played only a couple of matches on online, and it's it, it's really been a really weird mix. It's like I think on one match it was pretty good and like almost no lag, and then the other match was almost like a like a PowerPoint presentation. It just like kept buffering and. I, I think at one point, like, it just sort of disconnected near the end. 
Oh, um, wow. Really? So, you had a disconnect? Yeah, I, I had a di like one of the fighters just randomly like disappeared in the middle of a fight, and it says an error has occurred. Really? I, I, have, I, I have not yeah. seen that yet. Um, what about um, you, 77? Uh, so I guess I'd have to separate my opinions from before and after the patch. And before the patch, I thought, you know, it was very, very few matches that lagged. But just so many times I was getting a four-player match when I'm trying to get a 1v1, and that was very, very annoying. Uh, but after the patch, I have not gotten one four-player match when I didn't want to. Um, there are still a few, uh, a few laggy matches here and there. Uh, but overall, I think it's pretty good. I pretty much follow where you are, 77. Like, before the patch, yeah, it was annoying not really getting the match type that you wanted. But after the patch, I agree, I have not gotten a single match that I was... That was unpreferable to me. I never got a four-player match. It was usually Omega Battlefield forms. Like, I really do like what they have done with the patch, with the, the matchmaking. As for, like, the lag, um, I never had that before or after the patch. Um, I also have a very, very good internet connection at my place. I'm fortunate for that, and the router is right near my room. Um, so that's good. But, um, yeah, I haven't... I haven't had a disconnect. Um, I, I have had my fair share of, like, laggy matches, but I've never had anything close to Smash Wii U. Like, I've, you, no. said a, you said a PowerPoint presentation. I, I haven't had anything close to that. Maybe it's just luck of the draw, um, but I have not had anything like that. It might just be my internet, but I think my internet is mostly all right for the most part. Um, but I, I might have to consider getting one of those uh, Ethernet adapters for the Switch, like the USB ones. Mm -hmm. um because I, I have an ethernet i have an ethernet cable um so i can just if i have the adapter i can just plug it into the switch dock and hopefully that will make the online a bit smoother i, I was gonna pick one up but i wanted to check to see how well it would run on my internet first before i actually mm. did but it works perfectly fine on my end so i don't think i'm gonna buy one um but yeah is there anything else we want to talk about about smash i mean we've been on this topic for 25 minutes or so. <laughs> There's the DLC characters. This is true. I have mysterious, well, technically four mysterious now. Um, four mysterious characters. Uh, the Game Awards, just before Smash Ultimate actually came out, Joker from Persona 5. Oh my just god. My reaction... <laughs> my So, when that was... It was after midnight when I was watching that. Uh, my time. And I was getting tired i was starting to run on fumes i was like oh my god i gotta wake up in the morning to go pick up smash uh struggle right but like i was just sitting there i was like ready to fall asleep i was just recording my reaction just in case it was anything um and then halfway through the trailer you know you get that letter of invitation and you mm. can see it in my reaction i immediately woke up like immediately was like wait what the hell what the hell like i need to actually be paying attention to this um and then yeah joker from persona 5 like i at first, I was like, oh, okay, Persona 5 coming to the Switch. Don't really know much about the series, but eh, maybe I can just be lazy and just not watch this. And I almost turned off my camera. I was so close to turning off my camera. Um, and then, yeah, you get the invitation. I was like, what the hell? Like, oh, my God. Now, I'm I'm not really into Persona. Like, I, I, I don't really know anything about the Persona series. I think I'd like to try it out one day. Oh, I definitely um, do now. Yeah. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about the music. And I, I really love good music and games, so... Um, but it's like, I, I wasn't, like, overly shocked. At, well, I mean, I was shocked. But I wasn't excited for, for Joker in Persona 5 because I didn't really know about him. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy for, like, all the Persona fans who just didn't see it coming. Um, I think, actually, I think Never Seen It Coming is actually a lyric from a Persona song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just realized when I said that, but it was very unexpected, and I can definitely imagine that a lot of Persona fans, like, went really, really crazy and excited over I, that reveal. I guess what like, excites me more is not so much the character, but just the prospect of how they're going to be handling the DLC. Because when I yeah. heard that, like, Nintendo was going to be handling it and not Sakurai, yeah. I was like, oh god, this means we're going to get, like, another Fire Emblem character, and, like, like all this Nintendo stuff, but, like... Man, the floodgates have truly opened. Like this was like a cloud level announcement. So I, I think Nintendo's like now it's Nintendo choosing the DLC fighters and not Sakurai. Yeah. I feel like they're gonna be a lot more like broad characters, whereas whereas I think Sakurai would try and uh, Sakurai when choosing a character he might see how well they perform in a fight, 
Whereas Nintendo will look at the series and the sales and what games people play today. Yeah. Um, which is why f- predictions for DLC, I think that Crash Bandicoot and Sora will make it in from Kingdom Hearts. Oh man, I hope. <laughs> um, I which hope. I, I've probably mentioned before, Sora is my number one character that I want to see. Um, not just because I love Kingdom Hearts, but I think he can just work really, really well as a fighter, and he would just fit in really well with Zelda and Xenoblade. Well, 77, how are you feeling about the DLC so far? What we know, what we don't know. So, I almost missed the joke reveal because um, where I live, it was literally 20 minutes before um, the launch of Smash Ultimate, and I was going to pick it up at midnight, but I decided to just stay a little bit more and see if they reveal anything, and then you know, like you, I saw the Persona thing, I'm like, oh, okay, it's coming to Switch. Uh, but the moment they mentioned uh, the greatest invitation of all or something like that, I was like, okay, they're in Smash. And <laughs> it was just a shock, you know? But at the same time, almost not, because I know um, Sakurai himself is a pretty big Persona fan. He is. Uh, yeah. Uh, even the menus are based off of Persona yeah. 5's, like, UI. The menus. Um... But I am kind of surprised they actually did go with Persona over um, something like Shin Megami Tensei, since that's a lot bigger on Nintendo platforms, yeah. and there's like a ton of games exclusive to it. Uh, but I guess they really are just going for broad appeal as opposed to system exclusive. Which is, I think it is the better route, honestly. Um, and it, it, you know, at this point, like Persona 5 has to come to the Switch now. I mean, this is a game that was, it ran on the PS3. Like, it has to come to the Switch now. Yeah. So, is there anything else we want to talk about on Smash Ultimate? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, how do you feel about uh, no more taunting online? Man, people need to man up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, like, I know that's not even a term that's, like, great to say in 2018, but, like, God, like, really? They took that away? Really? Like, I understand the no voice chat, but really? No taunting? It's, it's a very granular thing. Like, I honestly don't care. But, like, I, really? <laughs> I just think people definitely get a lot more offended by taunting nowadays, especially with the likes of, just for example, Fortnite. Like if you, <laughs> oh my God. If, you if you like kill someone in Fortnite and then do like a, a dance, people are gonna get really annoyed at that. And I, may, maybe that had something to do with why taunting was removed, because it takes it they they took it like really offensively. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I still find it really, really weird that they got rid of taunting. But, yeah. I think it would have been cool if uh, once you unlock Elite Smash for a character online, you now gain the access to taunt with that character online. I mean, like, if you're good enough to get there, then I think you have the right to taunt. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, weird, weird decision. Not really into it, but again, it's such a granular thing that it's. It, yeah. Ultimately, it's whatever, but yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, well, I think that might be everything. Oh, hang on. The soundtrack Ooh. to Smash Ultimate. Oh, yes. I, we've dabbled in this a little bit, but yeah, we have to gush about this. <laughs> oh, the amount of songs and the, the, the new remixes as well. Just so good. Sakurai has spoiled as rotten. I mean, like the music team, of course. That remix of Crocodile <laughs> Cacophony. Oh, my God. So good. Which, of I course, really I... love the remix of uh, Bomb, Ru- Bomb Rush Blush from Splatoon, Ooh. because oh, yes. the, the person who remixed it was Tomoya Otani, who was the Sonic composer nowadays. So like he he did Sonic Forces and uh, I think Sonic Rush Adventure as well. They, so like hearing really the Sonic gotta... style remix is just yeah. It was really cool, yeah, to see like these composers who worked on completely mm. different series tackle different series. Um, and for the most part, it turned out really, really good. Um, like, again, we, I know I touched on this earlier, but the Castlevania soundtracks, like, all of those remixes, like, I, I had such a hard time choosing which ones I wanted to play on the stage, because they're all just so good. Yeah, like you said, all the Castlevania music is just fantastic. And I have to say, one of my favorite um, remixes is definitely F-Zero Melody. Yeah, that was a total surprise, getting a new F-Zero remix, but it's actually got lyrics. Um... I'm thinking of the same one, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the one with the lyrics. Yeah, oh, so good. Um, another thing as well, which could also very slightly hint at Sora from Kingdom Hearts being in Smash, probably won't be, but um, 
have you two heard of the composer Yoko Shimomura? Oh, have yes. I ever? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So she she is essentially from the Square Enix side of development, but she worked on the Mario RPG music, um, and I think she did some of the Xenoblade Chronicles music as well, like the battle theme in Xenoblade Chronicles One. Um, but Yoko Shimomura is heavily involved with Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts, so. If Sora makes it into Smash, just the Kingdom Hearts music that will make it in. Good God, I, I, I'm not even a Kingdom Hearts person, but like I, I know how reputable reputable the music is in Kingdom Hearts, mm -hmm. and just how good of a composer Shimomura is. Um, oh God. <laughs> There's a specific song from Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, it's like one, one of the best battle themes in the Kingdom Hearts series. It's called Rage Awakened. I love that song. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. If, I just want that song to be in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So badly. Just, like, Sora versus Link in in some sort of Kingdom Hearts level with Rage Awakened in the background. That, that's, that would be a dream come true. I was actually quite surprised by the amount of new Pokemon remixes there were from Sun and Moon. Um, there were like, like six or seven of them, like quite a few of them. And they're all pretty good, um, except I don't like... This is, again, very small, very, like, the soundtrack's amazing. I don't like what they did to Gladion's theme. Like, I mm. I think they completely farted on it. Like, it just sounds like... It just sounds like a middle schooler doing a techno remix. Like, it does not, <laughs> it does not sound good. Like, other than that, I really love the, the soundtrack. Um, and I will say, okay, again, another super little thing. The soundtrack is amazing. I'm not complaining about it at all. But the lack of Tropical Freeze music is a little deflating, because that is one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. Like, just port over, like, a lot of those songs, and it's amazing. But we just got, like, Agreed. the opening stage, and I think that might have been it. Um, but yeah, very, not, very small thing. Is there not aquatic ambience in the, in the soundtrack? I don't think so, no. Oh, that's a, that's a really good song I liked from uh, Tropical Freeze. Yeah, awesome. that's... Oh, sorry, you go. Uh, I know, I was going to say, my only real nitpicks are I wish we had some uh, Metal Gear Rising Revenge music because the music from that game is absolutely phenomenal. And I don't know if you all would know the answer to this, but I know they made a remix of the Zelda 2017 trailer music. Mm. Is the original in the game, though? No, it's not. Oh, my God. <laughs> nope. isn't, that, isn't that crazy? Uh, it is. <laughs> I, I, I had to look that up, too. But, yeah, that, ga that soundtrack or that piece of music is nowhere in the game. There are ah. there are various remixes of that theme, you know, in the final battle, in the credits, but that song itself is not in the game. Hmm. I mean, the remix is still good, but I feel like the original is just the best. Yeah. Uh, it was the, the the original Breath of the Wild theme from that E3 in 2016 is like still really magical every time you hear it. Yeah. And I think the remix in Smash it definitely did a good job at remixing it, but it doesn't beat the original. Yeah, and Cass's theme, like that, got a remix in. Like I was not expecting. I, I guess the like, Cass is a popular character, but like I didn't know what they could really do with his theme or a lot of songs in Breath of the Wild. But man, they made it work really good. Yeah, that's Yoko Shimomura. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. That, yeah. Good um, honor. And th this is sort of getting into sort of musicy, techy sort of talk. But the original Cass's theme is in a three by four beat, so it counts in threes four times. And the, the remix in Smash Ultimate is counting in 4x4. Four four. So they've Ooh. changed the timing of some of the notes. Okay. Um, to give it like this more upbeat, sort of battle dancey feel to it. Um, and I, I, I really like how it's done that. So I, I guess before we wrap things up, we've been going for a while here, geez. Uh, before we wrap <laughs> things up, uh, do you guys want to list off any honorable mentions that were maybe close to making your top three? Uh... Um, I guess, I, I don't know whether this counts, it, it's sort of a, a polished up port of the game um, from about 10 years ago. Um, it probably would have made it into my like top 5, my, my, not so much 4, um, but Burnout Paradise on the PS4. Did um, that get a remaster this year? Yeah, it got a remaster. Oh my god, yeah. I don't even think I knew that. So uh, it, it is essentially just the PS3 version, but just polished up in HD. Um, and they added like they added all of the DLC at the start, 
which I think was a bit of a weird decision because you get a bit overpowered at the start of the game. Um, but yeah, it, it, that was a quite a fun game from earlier this year. It is a fun game, um, I agree. And also, I can't really put the full game on here, but I'd like to put Tetris Effect, uh, which is also mm. on the PS4. I am um, actually going to be playing that tonight. Uh, I'm, go I'm, going oh, to, right. I'm going to a Christmas party and my buddy has it, and I am so excited to play it. I have... Just, I, I love like visual light shows yeah. like uh, like in a game. Uh, it I'm, works I'm with music as well. Yeah. I, I'm excited to try it out. Um, do you have any have honorable mentions? Oh, sorry. Have you got PlayStation VR with Tetris FX as well? He does not. Just... Unfortunately, oh. he does not. Um, I don't know anyone in my personal life that has a PSVR. Um, so okay. I, I I need to you know obviously make some that... friends. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've I... heard it's really good. Yeah, I, I tried the demo, uh, the Tetris Effects like weekend demo with PlayStation VR. Absolutely amazing, like how it works. Uh, yeah. Do you have any honorable mentions, Seventy Seven? Uh, so I have a few, so I'm just gonna rapid fire them. Uh, so PS4, uh, Spider Man, that that game's fantastic. Go out and buy it if you have not. Uh, God of War also on the PS4. Uh, Cross Tag Battle. Soul Calibur 6, and this one I'm actually going to talk about a bit, and that is Torn of the Golden Country Xenoblade 2. Oh. Uh, so oh. I, love, I love the original Xenoblade 2, and I've only gotten halfway through Torn of the Golden Country so far, but I am really liking all of the system changes to the gameplay. I really like the rear and vanguard system. I think it just works a lot better than uh, what was originally in Xenoblade 2, and I already thought that worked very well. Um, the music's fantastic. Story seems pretty great so far. Uh, there does seem to be quite a bit of filler, but I get that it's not really supposed to be like a full uh, fledged game, so understandable. I I need to play Tone of the Golden Country because I loved Xenoblade 2. That's one of my favorite stories in a game. Um, and I guess Torna, from what I understand, fills in a lot of the blanks. Yeah. Um, so I'm I, I do need to get around to playing that. Um, as for my honorable mentions, I do have a few as well, so I'll kind of rapid fire them. Um, Pokemon Let's Go actually surprised me mm. more than I thought it was going to. Um, I actually, you know, there were some cool references in there to the original game and some of the other games. I just really enjoyed seeing Kanto in HD. Um, but ultimately, it was Kanto again, so it didn't quite make my list. Um, mm. Mega Man 11, which was actually... I was going back and forth between Octopath and Mega Man for my number three. But I ultimately gave it to Octopath. Um, it, I really do like what they did with Mega Man 11. I love the new Robot Masters. I love the stages. I love how Mega Man plays. I just felt the game was a little safe. Um, you know, we didn't have any Proto Man or bass in there, um, and the music was kind of bad, not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> and one other game that I do want to give a shout out to was, um, this game totally surprised me, um, Yoku's Island Express. It's, if you guys oh, don't know, yeah. it is a Metroidvania cross pinball yeah. game. Um, I bought it when it was on sale just for something to play while waiting for Smash. It totally surprised me, like, it's really good, and it's the first game that this <laughs> studio released, um, and it, it, the graphics have almost like an Ori in the Blind Forest feel to them, mm. uh, which yeah, I know, Tom, I know, Tom, you'll get into that. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it totally surprised me. Really, really good game. I'm honestly considering buying the full game for that, purely because of the, the Ori in the Blind Forest aesthetic and the, the really, really weird mix of like Metroidvania and pinball. Uh, which... there, there is a demo on the eShop, so give it a try. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, I've tried it. Oh, did you? Okay, yeah, it's really good, yeah, isn't it? I, I, yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely considering buying that. Cool. Well, yeah. is that everything from us? Pretty much. All right, so uh, thank you guys for listening for this feature-length discussion. Uh, <laughs> if, if you guys enjoyed, of course, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for lots more stuff on gaming. Um, Tom, where can they find you at? So I'm mainly just on YouTube and Twitter. Um, and I do remixes of video game music on YouTube. So there's Nintendo songs, Kingdom Hearts, Sonic, Zelda, things like that. Um, as well as just general gaming videos um, and sort of topical discussion videos as well. Right on. Uh, 77, where can they find you at? Uh, you can find me at Super Smash 77 on YouTube and Instagram and the Super Smash 77 on Twitter. I pretty much just do Nintendo videos, video game videos in general, uh, fighting game videos. And yeah. Awesome, and there will be a link to both of their channels in the video description. But otherwise, I think that takes care of Game of the Year for us. Uh, it was definitely a good year. Really excited for what 2019 has. Um, but for now, we are going to head out. So thank you guys for watching, and uh, see you later. Bye.